Do not underestimate just how frightened I am of balloons. If this thing pops on me, that's it. Video is over. I'm done, because I will be unconscious and covered in my own fecal matter. In case you haven't figured out yet, we're doing another DIY. But what are we DIYing? And DIY have I made this strange modern art-esque sculpture. Trying to get a job as NASA's chief rocket designer. This little freak of nature is going to be the framework for the thing that we're making. What are we making? Mushroom. I don't know what it is about people who keep rodents as pets, but they also give off the vibe that they like mushrooms as an aesthetic, so I'm hoping this video is going to go down really well. Especially because my sexy moss video kind of flatlined. It wasn't supposed to be a sexy moss video, I swear. That wasn't the plan. That is how it turned out, but it wasn't the plan. Any moss companies want to hit me up for the next advertising campaign, I'm free. All new, sexy sphagnum. As long as you don't mind where your profits are coming from, I can find you new customers. What was I talking about? I lost my train of thought, I've been distracted by Spexy Sphagnum Moss. Oh, mushrooms, that was it. Yes, we're making a mushroom and this will be the framework of said mushroom. I have not tested this DIY out yet. This is all just in the brain at the moment. You wouldn't have been able to tell. So this is to be the framework for the base of the mushroom, the, um, the, the... Not that gesture, ow. What's the, what's the middle bit got? The stalk? The mushrooms? The stem? Mushroom anatomy. Oh, as a detailed picture? Yeah, it's just called a stem. I am going for more of a whimsical, cartoony type mushroom rather than a uh, true to reality mushroom. That's basically my get out of jail free card when this ends up looking nothing like a mushroom. It's just occurred to me how risky of an endeavor that is. There's other things this could end up looking like if it goes wrong. So we have a ring of cardboard, a balloon, and a tomato pot all taped together. Clean film. Actually, I think you call this plastic wrap in America. The stuff you put over food. Oh, I've just been saying this is a mushroom. We're making a mushroom hamster hide. It occurred to me that I forgot to mention that part. It's hamster related. You know what would be really, really helpful if I could keep my brain on track for five minutes? Where is, what am I looking for and where is it? I can never feel sorry for people who find me annoying because they don't have to live with me. I do. Forever. <laughs> We can do this, we can do this. What? It is 11 o'clock at night. I, I probably should stop. I am so sorry. I'll be quiet now, I promise. So what we have here is a bowl of water mixed with pet safe glue. In case you don't know how to find pet safe glue, basically it's any liquid white school glue. I mean, it doesn't have to be white, but they're usually white. Uh, the stuff they sell really, really cheaply in craft stores and anywhere that sells school supplies. It needs to be non-toxic and water soluble. As long as it has those two things in the bottle, you're good to go. It's approximately one part glue to two parts water, and I've just mixed it until all the glue has dissolved. And this will be the paste for our paper mache. Now, if you are doing paper mache at home for an animal that you know is going to chew on whatever thing it is you're paper mache, whether you're recreating this or it's another design, I would advise that instead of doing PVA and water, that you do flour and water as your paste instead. There are tons of recipes online for how to make flour paste for paper mache. Just follow any one of those and you'll have basic the, same thing. the only real difference between using a PVA mixture and a flour mixture is that the PVA is a little bit stronger. And for the paper part of the paper mache, I just have some regular run-the-mill cheap toilet paper that I've pre-torn up into little strips. You can use regular printer paper if you want to, but this is much easier to mold and shape around your model. All you have to do is dip it in the glue, just lie it over your model. You can also apply the paste with a paintbrush if you prefer. The main goal is simply to cover the entire structure except for the very bottom because we do want to be able to actually take this thing off afterwards and not leave the frame inside. Cover the entire structure with paper mache and make sure you give it plenty of layers uh, so you can't actually see the frame through the paper. Just keep layering it up and layering it up and layering it up. My baby, I'm hesitating. And I don't know why, I don't know where we're going, don't know if I want to, even if I told you, now my heart has changed its mind, mm. hey listen, you need to understand, there's nothing wrong with
with you I didn't mean to trick you into things I didn't want to Never meant to hurt you Never meant to make you cry No, I don't know if I wanna stay Thirty-seven thousand layers of tissue later, it's done. Ready to be dried. Unfortunately, because of the materials I've used to make the the mold inside, I can't dry this inside an oven, which means I have to wait for it to air dry. And as you may have noticed, it's October, which is not the best time of year for air drying things. Shirkle, shirkle. Woo! Da, 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 We take the tissue, we scrimp the tissue, we stick the tissue. Scrimp, stick. Oh shoot, I'm supposed to be talking you through what I'm doing. This is basically representing the little, the little, the, 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 not that gesture. The little gill things on the underside of the mushroom where all the spores are. You know when you run your finger across the underside of a mushroom, it just feels like you're going through a filing cabinet full of paper? So I'm just kind of scrumpling the paper, wrapping it around the other side, and then uh, using a bit of the, the glue paste to hold it in place. I should add, I'm not pasting this side of the mushroom because otherwise it'll just flatten this out and make it all mold together and then I will lose the texture. So only putting glue on the back side and a tiny tiny bit on the cardboard to hold everything in place. Ta-da! Mushroom gills, aka the fungi filing cabinet. And we're putting the paper masher away for just a moment, taking the larger of the two rings that we made. Well, it's the same size as the other ring, but the, the inner it's got a bigger hole. These are a bunch of two centimeter wide strips that I cut from some thick drawing paper and I've bent over a tiny little bit at both ends. We're gonna take that pet safe glue and then we're going to, to glue and glue. Little handle for my hoop. And I'm gonna continue to make little handles for my hoop and go all the way around until I've used up all of these little paper strips. Breaking news, I'm an idiot. This part here is supposed to be the domey bit, the mushroom, right? This part, the gills, the frilly bit, that's supposed to go inside. Explain to me how I thought it was going inside when they're the same size. It's not happening. Ah, I have fixed it off camera. Don't you worry about it. I made a bigger one, a better one, one that this can actually fit inside of. It does fit, I've tried it. It fits, see? I'm aware that traditionally mushrooms are not pink. However, I wanted to make a red mushroom. I couldn't find any red tissue. This was the closest thing I had to red. Light red. It's a pale, it's gonna be a pale red mushroom. Taking some artistic liberties. Same deal as last time. We've got our paper, we've got our mash, and we're gonna apply it to the dome. When the moon hits the moon like a moon is a moon. That's a moon. I've left information out again, haven't I? Okay, this kind of paper. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible at what I do. In case you're wondering where you get colored tissue paper from, go to the serving wear section of basically any supermarket where they sell the serviettes or, or napkins, whatever it is you call it in your countries. The, the stuff they use for wiping your mouth at dinner time. Paper serviettes, they're sold in so many different colors. They are perfectly safe to use for your pets, for doing paper mache for them. And it saves you so much time because you can just paper mash your things in the color you want instead of having to 
paper mache them in white tissue and then paint them later on. Also, it means you don't have to worry about getting pet safe paint. A thing has happened and and it's uh it's not a great thing. <laughs> While the mushroom cap was drying, okay, it deformed a little bit, which completely expected it's made out of soft cardboard, that can happen. I was thinking going into it, not a problem. You know, nature isn't perfect. Mushrooms can be all sorts of funky shapes. If it deforms, it deforms, whatever, who cares? But suddenly my decision to make it pink has become very regretful. Because it deformed in a regretful way. I can't show it on camera. There is absolutely no way I'll get away with putting this on camera. YouTube will have me. They... On Dan's advice, I will be using some red food colouring to make it a more appropriate mushroom colour. I'm also going to attempt to reform it a little bit to make it more round rather than... What am I supposed to fucking do with this? <laughs> Just a couple drops of food colour. <laughs> yeah, this'll work. This'll, this'll, ooh, that's a nice, that's a nice shade of red there. Um, I'm gonna have to do this off camera. <laughs> I will see you again when I fix the problem. <laughs> I've recolored it. I've kind of reshaped it. I have red food colouring all over my hands. It looks a little bit better. I think it might be salvageable. I think it doesn't look like what it used to look like. What I'm gonna do, and I'm, I'm gonna continue to do this off camera just in case, I'm gonna be cutting uh, little circles of tissue from my, my toilet roll that I used earlier for paper mashing the base, and I'm gonna be sticking these onto the, the mushroom cap, and hopefully, once it has some more mushroomy like features, it won't look so. To stick these on, I'm just going to use the same pet safe glue. I'm going to mix a little bit of water into it um, because it just makes it easier to work with. Uh, I'm literally just going to cover this thing. Do wish me luck. It's good news. I think I've saved it. It's a mushroom. <laughs> All I'm going to say is it looks a hell of a lot more family friendly now. So we have our completely innocent looking mushroom cap. We have our gills and we have the stalk. This needs to go inside this. I'm going to kind of bend and, and, and wiggle and, and forcibly insert it. That looks actually a lot better than I was expecting it to look. And then obviously we need a doorway in the stalk so the hamster can actually get inside. So I need to choose uh, where, where am I gonna make this door? looks kind of good. <laughs> Wait, what? Hold <laughs> on. I can't believe I made it look good. I mean, my opinion doesn't really matter here. The only one whose opinion really genuinely matters in deciding whether or not this is a decent build is that of the lemon god. I did try to get some cute footage of lemonade using this house, but unfortunately, despite staying up until 5am two nights in a row, and despite seeing her use the house several times, the only footage I actually managed to get was, was this. She would wait until the exact moment that I put my camera down before she actually went inside it. I swear she's doing it on purpose. Feel free to recreate this for your own hamsters if you want to and share the finished results with me over on Instagram if you want to. Come follow us on Instagram for extra pet, lifestyle and behind the scenes content and don't forget there are only a few more days in my merch store sale. It ends on the 31st of October so if you want to get 10% off any merch in store, get there quick. Thank you so much for watching the video and sticking around to the end and I will see you guys whenever I see you. Bye!